All right, what's going on, everybody? How you doing? Welcome to another episode of Talking Buffalo, part of the Blue Wire Network. I'm your host, Patrick Moran. Thank you, as always, for locking in video side, audio side. It is Tuesday, and I'll tell you what, man, it's been a it's been a hot minute since I've had my buddy <laughs> Joe Yerdon on. Of course, Joe, creator of Noted Hockey. Uh, Co-host of the Maintenance Day podcast, along with Lance Lazowski from the Buffalo News. Mm -hmm. I was looking it up, and we were talking for a few minutes before I started rolling the tape here. It's been a month since you've been on, and it doesn't feel like it just because there's been so much that's went on. From uh, You were on the West Coast. You went to Arizona and Mm -hmm. Vegas Mm -hmm. um, with the Sabres a couple weeks ago. And then, of course, we had the Blizzard. Mm -hmm. And then last week, we were set to tape a show after the bills Bengals game but you know demar hamlin the uh, the incident happened and we just mm-hmm. felt it was wildly inappropriate to even attempt to do a podcast mm-hmm. which was the right call but anyway yeah. man it's been a it's been a while man how you doing yeah doing good it's uh it's been it's been busy like it's weird because like it, it's been super busy on the saver side for a thousand reasons um but also like like going out west on a whim was uh was a pretty good idea because it turned out I saw a, a couple awesome games uh, in Arizona and certainly in Vegas. Uh, some great, great play from them out west. I, I missed out on the Colorado game, which would have been cool too because I love going to Denver. But, uh, but hadn't been to Arizona in about uh, ten years, eleven years, about that. So, and I w- was dying to see Mullet Arena. I was absolutely dying to see the place. Wanted to see what it was like because you know, college hockey's my roots, man, and the Coyotes playing there. A lot of people are just like, oh, this is so, this is pathetic. They move the team, blah, 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 all that stuff. I'm like, dude, think about what you're talking about. It's a, it's a rink the size of like Harbor Center, a little bit bigger than Harbor Center. And you're watching NHL regular season games and you're no further than 12 rows away from the ice. Yeah. Come on. Like, tell me that's not the dream. <laughs> like, it's a 5,000 seat place. They're still selling beer and food. There's like a club section with like all you can eat stuff. Like, it's great. It's great. It was awesome. It was very cool to be there in Vegas. Holy smokes. I'd never been to Vegas before. Never. That was, so that was your first, first time. time. And it was sensory overload for, for every, like for everything. I mean, the game itself was great. Um, I, you know, obviously Sabres win. So that's, that's, it's good to cover a happy, you know, a happy team that you're covering. Sure. Um, but like the arena, like T-Mobile arena is incredible. It's just a, a fantastic facility. The whole, the pregame show that they do for everything is awesome. Like it's the lights, it's the music, it's, you know, the, the different little things they do to kind of, to to make it very Vegas, like the uh, the Sabers, the the visiting team end of the ice, they have showgirls uh, around the glass for warmups to be distracting. So yeah, <laughs> they're just like they're there. They're you know some of them are pounding on the glass. They're you know dancing like whatever. I'm just kind of like that's 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 sneaky. <laughs> I've never I've never I've never been to Vegas, and this was your first time. And I was going to yeah. ask you about that too. And we're going to talk plenty Bills and Sabers here sure. in just a couple of minutes, but. You know, so I was thinking because I I knew you were going, we had talked and I'm like, all right, well, from a hockey standpoint, might've lost a little bit of his luster because there was no Jack Eichel playing this game. I'm talking, you know, specifically for Buffalo, but still Mm -hmm. one exciting game to go to. And just regardless, man, Vegas is Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, Hustle and bustle, busy, the lights. I can only imagine. I've never been there. uh, Vegas is, is unreal. And the day I got there was the day the Raiders were playing the Patriots at Allegiant, at Allegiant, or, uh, whatever the hell the name of the stadium. I don't know. Whatever. Vegas is football stadium. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know who, who the hell, whoever the sponsor, I don't care. It's, it's the, it's the Vegas Raiders stadium, like whatever. Right. And like, I get there that day and I was like, Oh, maybe I can, maybe I can get snag a ticket to the game. That'd be kind of cool. You know, see a game there. Like I could have walked, you know, I could have walked to the stadium. Like it wasn't too far from where I stayed at the Excalibur or uh, yeah, Excalibur. So old, old casino hotel like it's one of the old ones like on the strip anyways mm-hmm. um and like my only comparable to it is that it's like a 27 floor uh comfort in that's with, with a casino on the on the ground floor um <laughs> but it was uh but i so i look up tickets ticket prices i was like ah this is, you know raiders stink patriots stink like well it's got it prices could be pretty good no no 250 bucks was like the cheapest ticket i'm like i am not Eesh. I am not paying 250 bucks to watch that game. To watch a Raiders turns Patriots out, game? Turns out I should have because that game turned out insane. Oh, yeah, it that, did. That's right. Because that was the, uh, the uh, you know, uh, the, for whatever reason, the, the uh, what was it, Jacoby Myers tries to lateral back to uh, uh, Stevenson. Like, like the game's tied and he tries to lateral back and then they, you know, uh, 
uh, what's his face? Uh, Mac Jones gets stiff armed by the guy, the Raider guy who got the ball and ran it into to win the game. <laughs> Would have been hilarious, but that's not that's not worth two hundred fifty bucks to me. Now you know it's crazy too. You mentioned that play, and it gets me thinking all the time. Where it's like when you have a a season, it's like all right, well, it's just one game, and these things matter at the end. Now they would not have won the game there if that didn't happen necessarily. It goes to overtime, right? But if they win that game, and they're going in the week um, last, you know, just Sunday against the Bills, they're in the playoffs, right? You know that that. That game cost I don't want to say the that game cost them the playoffs if they would have won that in overtime, just like with the Bills. I go back to mm -hmm. uh, you know, 13 and three is nothing to sneeze at and being the number two seed. And again, we're talking plenty about this, just a few, but I go back to that Vikings game and blowing a three-score mm -hmm. lead in the second half. And mm -hmm. if Josh Allen handles two snaps from, from Mitch Morris and takes a knee, the, the Bills are the number one seed right now. And they're not, we're not even talking about a game coming up this week. Just yeah, those little things are in the season. Stuff either, you know, like you don't right. worry about it. Yeah. Right. So, you know, it's just crazy that well, sometimes they're in the middle or some part of a season where you're like, well, it's just a game. It's just one of 17. Well, it, they all matter and it comes back to bite you when things yeah. like that happen. I forgot yeah. you were, or you were at least in town when that happened. That's right. That was nuts, you man. You don't have to tell me about that. The How, how did the Lions lose the tiebreaker? They couldn't <laughs> stop the stupid Seattle Seahawks from scoring points on them repeatedly. Yeah, like what week three, four, whatever it was, like week two, I don't know. But like losing a 48 45 game to Seattle who doesn't score points, can't do it. Like, you yeah, can't, like that's you know, there were other games obviously in their season where it's like, nah, they probably shouldn't have lost that one, but like that, that's the one that actually kills them, you know. Like they had the same record as Seattle, yeah. finished finish great, you know, stuff happens. Like, that's I, I need to remind people because it's been a month now since Joe's yeah. been on that. We say it all the time. Joe is a Bills watcher. Joe is a Detroit Lions fan. I'm not going to lie, man. Other other than you, there may not have been another person around here anyway that I know that wanted Detroit to get in the playoffs more than me. Uh, that Seattle Rams game, because the Lions needed Seattle to lose, game. that was gut-wrenching. And again, I'm not even That's... a Lions fan. I just, I've come to, to enjoy watching them and I respect I could... what they're doing right now. <laughs> Fucking Baker Mayfield. I mean that Rams receiver was open deep in overtime. They so the um the Rams are or I'm sorry Seattle gets the ball to start overtime. They force a punt. Um, the Rams get the ball. I, I can't remember who who the receiver was. It, it, it's the name's escaping me. But anyway, whoever it was was goddamn open. Mm -hmm. And Baker is the second leg getting the ball, and he's got too much air under it. And then the Seattle guy Diggs ends up intercepting the ball. And then Seattle goes on to win, but man, Baker yeah. Mayfield's shitty ass trash bag. <laughs> that guy was open, hit him. And you're talking about the Detroit Lions being a playoff team right now, man. Yeah. It's, you know, I mean, listen, there's, there's so, there's too many of those things where I can just be like, oh God, you know, why, you know, curse team, all the blah, 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 whatever. I, I, I could, I could do that. I could yell about that forever, but you know what? They did their job yesterday. They did like everything that was within their control. They took care of. Like, yeah, that's that's what I that's what oh, I can I can take away. So and, much credit uh, to them. Like, so much credit to them. You know that that was a game they could have just rolled over and said whatever, just screw it, who cares? Yeah. Like, we didn't get the playoffs. This stinks. Uh, I thought they would for next year. No, I would I would have bet big on Green Bay after Seattle uh, won that game. Uh, mm -hmm. But Detroit, to their credit, the right mentality to just bounce back and then. Knock out Green Bay. I mean, I, I thought I thought they would be so dejected and uh, lay a stinker. Campbell made it. Campbell said it perfect. He said something: "If we can't be in the playoffs, we're going to make sure Green Bay. We're going to knock them out." Yep. And he did, and and that's what probably made me more happy than anything because, like you, yeah, I just fucking hate Green Bay. Yeah, so I really do. Funny. Which is funny. I grew up, <laughs> not grew up, but when I was younger, I liked the Packers. Man, I liked the tradition of them. Mm -hmm. I liked Brett Favre as a player. He was exciting you know, before the tail end of his career, when we started to learn what kind of person Creep. human being yeah. he is, right. That we've learned a lot more through the years, but as a football player, Brett Favre was fun as hell to watch. So I was a Packers fan. Yeah, I just don't like Aaron Rodgers. I never really liked him as a human. And now I despise him as a human being. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he might be one of the few players in the history of sports where I've ever said, dude tears his ACL. I'm not going to be sad about it. Let's just put it that way. Okay. That's yeah. how much I hate this guy as a human being. And, uh, to see Detroit go out there on the road, ejected yep. minutes after knowing that they're out of the playoffs and still treat that game like a playoff game. I mm -hmm. just think that's testament to the character of that team. And oh, yeah, 
They're a, they're an ascending football team. To my credit, by the way, if you've been listening and watching the show all season, I think I was kind of a little more you, optimistic about the Lions than you for a good chunk yeah. of this year. Yeah, no, you've been on the band. Well, listen, I I am bandwagon. I, I, I've, been, no I've been through a lot of crap with this team. Sure. Week. I like I even still like how this this final week played out. I predicted this weeks ago. I said that Seattle games get that Seattle loss is going to cost them because I because I'm looking up and down at like the the other potential wild card teams and I'm looking I'm like ooh well you know if they you know Green Bay they can beat them that'll take care of that you know Giants Commanders like eh, hopefully they stay out of the mix like whatever um, but then I look and saw Seattle had the same record as them I'm like nope that's the one that's yeah. the one that's going to cost them and I hate being right in that situation but it's like. It's you know it's the lion's fate accompli like that's that's just what happens that that's their life that's their existence that's how things go but this was such a positive end to this like eight and two the last ten games of the season and Do even you... still I think they should have beat the Bills like that's a game oh they, absolutely it's another they game they should have the won bills. they should have beat like, the Bills I admit that should have won game and that's it, it's that annoying because the Bills are really good and like you can't get too upset about it because again the Bills are really good Allen was kind of crappy for most of the game except when he needed to make a big play and he did and then you know lines do make some dumb penalties do whatever hand the game away but you know it, it's that that's that's a it's an inexperienced team that's a team that's you know that ha- it isn't usually in those spots you know and, and listen they've learned so much stuff through the year and that includes Campbell because Campbell's he's made some decisions this year where you're just kind of like dude what do you, why, why'd you do that and then after the game he's like that's me. I, that's my bad. I'm, you know, that I made that mistake and I, you know, I own up to it to the guys that's on me. Like any coach that does that, where he just, he's just like, yeah, no man, I, you know, tried it, failed, didn't do it. Won't do it again. Like he's like, that's just what he does. And that's why, that's why I'm positive about this group because, you know, it started with last season, like, you know, last year they go well, like what 13, three, 13 and one. And it's like, Oh boy, here we go again. And it's like, but the end of the, but like, you know, they started off like what? Oh, and eight, something like some trash like that. They started off horrible and, you know, they beat Minnesota to finally get off the schneid. And then it was like, oh, OK. Then they played pretty well at the end of the year. And you're like, oh, well, where the hell was this all season? And then yeah. you know, start off slow again this year. Dude, and even from the get go this year, you and I talked about it. Like their offense was incredible. Like, you know, they put up a ton of points. They could run yeah. the ball all over the place. And then it was just like, well, if Goff can figure it out, then, hey, maybe they got something. Well, then he figured it out. You know, teams started thinking like, well, they're going to run on us. So we can't let that happen. And then golf just became a very solid quarterback. Just a guy that took care of the ball. Didn't turn it over. Like he turned over the, like he had two turnovers. I think like the last 10, 11 weeks of the season, whatever it was. I like that's been his, that's been his, you know, Achilles heel for, you know, ever since that Super Bowl season with the Rams, like he just was an interception machine, fumble machine. And then he stopped, like it just stopped happening. And it's like, yeah. Oh, okay. We'll Cool. I it's definitely, weird. I, it, it's it's very weird to have the Lions season end, and I'm kind of like, man, let's get to next year. Let's do this. Let, let's let's see what the, let's see where this goes now. There's some kind of parallels in a way to the, the Bills of 2017, and, and here's what I mean by that: not necessarily uh, the talent on the field or what the record was. The mm-hmm. point being is, like you said earlier this year, you're just so conditioned to this team being not good that you had no expectation. Now you see how they finish, and you, you know that this team can play with the better teams in the league. Now going in the next year, I guarantee you that you're going to have higher expectations oh, as absolutely. you should be. By the mm-hmm. way, this is a team that's in the top 12 in cap space for this offseason. This is a team that's got not just one, but two draft picks in the top mm-hmm. 18, including the sixth overall pick. Yep. Um, they got, they got one of the best young offensive lines in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Aiden Hutchinson is the real deal. And by the way, you talk about the Detroit Lions offense being good all year. Guess what? Jameson Williams is a stud and he just started to get unleashed a little bit. Well, he just Near he, the end he was of the finally season. healthy. Like that, he was out right. the ACL. Like the what whole a draft season. that's going to turn out to be for them if these guys can stay healthy between Hutchinson and Williams, both of those guys yeah, in the man. first round. So yeah, and there's a lot to be optimistic for if, yeah. if you're a, a Detroit Lions fan. And back to your point about the Bills, they sh- they should have beat the Bills. I- yeah. I'll say this though: the Bills are a good team, and I think the Bills kind of they made plays to take it away. But as yeah. somebody who is been, hates the Miami Dolphins like I do. I go back to early in the year when the, the um, Detroit, the offense was just running a rough shot over the Miami defense early on, but they couldn't hold that lead. That yep. came back to hurt them. You know, Tua I got a tweet. Had, Tua, had, Tua had a big game that day, he did. Too, which was very he did. He it's, did. A, it's annoying, but like, you know, two is good. I know Tua. nobody wants to hear that, but two is good. I mean, 
Miami did everything to try to ruin his career this year. So, you know, whatever, but well, they do, they might not be done trying to ruin his career That's before, before true. this, before this true. week's over. We'll see how that plays out. Let me read you a tweet. Cause I thought this was interesting about a bottom feeder from last year. Uh, Zachary Emmett tweeted this out. Is the teams with the top two picks in last year's draft, the Jaguars and the lions just eliminated last year's top two seeds the Titans and the Packers on back-to-back nights in prime time to both finish the year with winning records. And in the case of the Jaguars, they're in the playoffs. They won their division. And with Detroit, like I said, just one bounce of a football, probably away or or one Baker Mayfield, not being a shit quarterback throw away from being in the playoffs. So it goes to show you like in the NHL against the Eagles week one, where it's like, don't do that. Right. You cover the NHL, you cover hockey, you write about hockey all the time. And it's like, rebuilds are slow burns for the most part yeah. with hockey, you know, it don't happen in a year or even two mm-hmm. years, but that's proof in the NFL. Literally the teams with the top two picks in the draft last year, both had winning records this year. One of them were in the playoffs and one of them should have been. That's the way the NFL works. It's bam, bam. You can turn things around yeah. quickly. And you know, for in Jacksonville's case, they had top picks, what, two years in a row two or two of the last three years. Yeah. Cause they picked Lawrence. What was, that was two years ago. Wasn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah, so three, I, you know, yeah this was, no, this was his second year. So actually he's back to back years then. Yeah. So this I, was only Trevor Lawrence's second season in the league. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so yeah. two years in a row, they, you know, top pick and, like, listen, that, that they're their own thing. Like everybody knows Jacksonville is kind of a mess. They're kind of, they're always weird. Jacksonville's always weird. And like Lawrence didn't look great against Tennessee, but like, still won I, it, it's the thing like guy can look like crap and still win right? but yeah you know i'm lawrence i don't know lawrence is weird because one week he looks awesome and you're like wow this dude's for real then the next week he's like 15 for 45 and like you know overthrowing everybody and throwing a couple of picks and you're like what the hell's wrong with this guy yeah but um I agree. but yeah like i it, you know listen detroit had been bad for you know but has been bad for so long and like they've always had high draft picks and it was just like they did nothing with them or they pick guys that were idiots or you know or you get a more on like matt millen drafting a receiver for three straight seasons and they were all, all three guys had problems you know just i mean like off field issues like you know charles rogers was was heavy into heavy into drugs and not even like not even like dangerous right he's in the he was big in the weed but of course you know the nfl punishes weed like it was you know you know, like it's a you know, federal crime but like here uh, yeah right so and then you know mike williams was you know not in shape mike williams should have been one of the best receivers ever like ever, that dude at usc was he was incredible he was, he was so great. good but he just couldn't stay didn't stay in shape didn't want to stay in shape and then it was like oh he's a tight end now and i'm like nah, that's not gonna last and then what's this uh then roy williams you know roy williams is pretty good but what? You know, but then your quarterback stinks. You know, Joy Harrington wasn't good. So, and that's another top pick where it's like, oops, drop the ball there. That, that, you know, Harrington probably should have been good, but he was college good. He wasn't pro yeah. good. You had, uh, before we talk bills here, you, uh, covered obviously the Sabres. And before we started taping, you were telling me about, a a football related interaction you had with, uh, Casey yeah. Middlestead after practice today. What was that about? Well, well, he's Casey's from Minnesota and he's a big Vikings fan. So is, so is Kyle Pozo too. Um, and so, I, you know, and I've been talking with the, you know, talk to those guys about football because we're the, you know, the NFC North fans, you know, in the, in the area. And he's all kinds of, he's all kinds of like nervous about the Vikes because he's, he's like, he's like, man, they're really good this year. I really liked how they're playing. You know, Cousins was really good. He's like, he's like, I don't worry about him. Their offense is awesome, but the defense is a little, eh. And I'm like, and I told him, I said, I said, the Vikings can either go to the Super Bowl or they're going to lose to the Giants in week one. And he's like, yeah, no, that's exactly, <laughs> that's, that's, that, that, that's totally what they are, though. He's, he's like, but he's like, but if they get hot, like they can go, like he's like, they can score points is the thing. He's like, they can. Oh, good. Jefferson's good. Like they can score. He's like, Cousins is playing fine. Like I like him. It's, it's it, and it's it's weird and I go I go well what if they end up playing Buffalo in the Super Bowl and he's like well I'd actually like to see that I go would you <laughs> would you really and he's, he's like oh well come on you know you know I'm playing here like they you know owners own the same team so I'd be happy if they won but you know if the Vikes win it I'd be happy too but I can't he's like I can't lose but I'm like come on <laughs> <laughs> Casey come on and he's he's like no 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 I'm serious he's like but 
it's kind of tough around here. I got to say, you know, I'm a Vikings fan, but I got to kind of keep it, keep it buttoned up because I can't really, <laughs> can't really root about them too hard because it's, you know, it's Bill's town. So I'm, I'm sure there's lots of guys in that room and, you know, bandits and, and these other teams too, that are fans of oh, sure. other teams besides the bills. And unfortunately for him, it's not the off season. So we can't disappear. Yeah. And, you know, every for the Vikings, he does that. He wears a Minnesota Vikings hat. He's going to get murdered. Yeah. In, <laughs> well, I mean, like at least, at least, Good thing for him. It's a team in the other conference and they play each other once every four years. So it's like, you know, whatever you don't, when it comes to Vikings bills anyways, it's like, you don't have to worry about it too much, but now it's playoffs and it's like, well, there's the possibility they could wind up facing each other in the Super Bowl, which would have a thousand storylines to it. You know, two Oh and four historical teams in the Super Bowl. Somebody's got to get one. Somebody's somebody's going on five. You know, it's, it's it's, it's, the, the historical pressure to that is, is something else, but it's cool. Like, I, I don't know. It's nice. To, just having, being able to have those conversations with guys alone is, is pretty cool because you know, it's, it's, you're not talking hockey. You're talking about something totally else that we're, that we're both like, fa- you know, we're fans. You know, we're fans of something else. Like we can allow ourselves to be fans of that. Cause you, you work in sports. It can be a little tough to be fans of, of other things. I know, I know for players, it's a little different because you know, it's not like, you know, uh, you know, if they grew up fans of some hockey team when they were kids, it's like, well, you know, they put that that gets put away <laughs> when you become when you become a player. Right. League. But you know, when it comes to other sports, obviously they got they they have fandom. You know, they got fandom. Like you know, Matias Samuelson's a big Eagles guy. You know, he's grew up in Philly, so like that's you know, there's things like that where you know, you know guys have their ties. And I, you know, obviously in the past you had Eichel being a big Patriots fan, and everybody's like, what do you do about the Bills? And it's like, well, you know, I hope they do okay, but you know, listen, my loyalties are you know, where my loyalties lie. So it's, you know, it's things like that where, you know, you have guys where it's just kind of like, you know, whatever, but, uh, but yeah, but, but, you know, shooting the, shooting the crap with these guys about football. It's, it's kind of cool. And Casey, you know, loves the Vikes. So does, so does Kyle. Kyle loves the Vikes too. So it's, it's, it's nice. All right, back here with Joe Yurden. Let's uh kind of switch gears here. The you know the na- narrative sometimes they can be so overstated and and overrated, but when it comes to Buffalo, everything that this city has been through over the last years, I don't think you can overstate it or understate it. I should say enough. It's just crazy, man. You so you know the the, the Jefferson tops shooting just such a a horrible dark time in the, in the history of of, of this city. Uh, six feet of snow very early into the yeah. wintery season. I don't even say winter because it wasn't even winter. Winter like season, first day of winter, basically. Yeah, that happened. It forced a, a game to be real relocated against Cleveland to Detroit. Uh, they returned to Detroit a week later for Thanksgiving. And the guy that they threw boatloads of money at, Vaughn Miller, tears his ACL. And, you know, he's out for the season. The kind of guy that they really wanted for this time mm-hmm. of year right now. So they lose him. Uh, and then, of course, the blizzard of 2022, it kills over 40 people. I mean, people literally freezing to death in their cars on Christmas mm-hmm. Eve and Christmas is just so sad and so tragic. And then Monday night, you know, to see a, a good young football player and by all accounts, an awesome human being go mm-hmm. down like that and quite literally nearly lose his life on a football field, man. It's like. The narrative in this case is true where, you know, every city goes through hard times and every organization has adversity. But, I mean, this is just a lot to put on a plate in, yeah. in one year, less than one calendar year. It's yeah. just uh, it's just crazy. I thought the Bills were going to be going into this game on Sunday uh, football-wise. They'd be on some adrenaline high, the emotion, the crowd was really going to lift them up. But then I was concerned as the game went on that, you know, they – uh that this long week would weigh on them. And which by the way, to an extent, I do think I was right. The bills win the game 35, 23, but you know, quite frankly, I thought the bills were by and large kind of outplayed by new England for big chunks of the game. The difference was the big plays, you know, the game changing plays that the bills dominated the big plays. And that's why they won by two scores. You had two kick returns by Naeem Hines, uh, the 42-yard bomb to John Brown, what a sensational catch that was, by the way. Of uh, The 49-yard bomb to Stephon Diggs. Then you had three interceptions on defense because mm-hmm. the, the Patriots moved the ball well. The Patriots had yeah. three touchdown drives of at least 74 yards. But again, the Bills 
got three turnovers on defense. And so the big plays were the difference. I, I think, like I said, I think they were hopped up on adrenaline and emotion and, you know, it was tough to get through that game. A lot of credit to them just for that. What a, what a, just what a crazy week, Joe, man. Yeah. That's a, that's an intense, it's a lot of stuff through the week. Cause you, it, cause the week starts with, you know, you're, you're going, you're sorting through everything that happened, obviously, you know, you're hoping, you know, everything with Hamlin works out, you know, he gets better, things improve. And then as the, you know, the days went on, he got better each and every day. And then you get to the end of the week and it's, you know, he's, he's FaceTiming with the guys and, you know, his conditions getting better, you know, seemingly by the hour. And you're like, okay, is like Friday. It felt like everything settled down. Right? Yeah. You know, everything was finally like, okay, this is a good, like there was a good, there's a very good update on Thursday, obviously. And you're like, okay, this is, this is going in the right direction. But then, you know, he's able to talk, he's able to communicate with everybody, you know, and he's feeling good and you know, all the, all the stuff that goes into that. So, uh, I know it was at that point when, you know, when we found out that he was talking, he FaceTime with the team on Friday, we're just kind of like, there is zero chance the Bills lose this game. There's yeah. like there's very little chance that they lose that game just because they're, they're, the whole situation was set up in a perfect form. Um, but I mean, you know, listen, it it's natural to have like kind of like a a letdown of sorts just because that's so many emotions to go yeah. through. You can it's just it's a full on roller coaster where it's it's worry, it's it's sadness, it's worry, it's you know, and the worry part's the worst part of it because you're just you're just like you say, I just want to be okay, just be healthy, get better, man. Like all the whole thing, because you know, guys in critical condition, like that's scary. That's scary stuff. And you know, you get to the end of the week and it's like, yeah, he's still in critical, but like now he's communicating with everybody. Now it's now you feel better about it. It's like, you know, you know, everything that they're checking on him health wise is is it feels like it's in a better place. You know, he's tweeting out, you know, he tweets out after he's Naheem Knight runs, runs a touchdown back. He's OMFG. Yeah, like that's basically what everybody else said too. Yeah. <laughs> Watching that happen. But um it's only natural to kind of have like that that comeback. And you know, listen, it everybody hates the Patriots. I get it. You know, nobody it, it's hard to have a respect for him because you know Mac Jones isn't a great quarterback, but Belichick still knows how to prepare his guys and they came out pretty well prepared and they still they were able to do things against the Bills defense, which looks like a real big problem going into the playoffs. Uh, but they were able to run against them. Jones was able to make a few nice plays. Um, and, you know, they, the game was a little tight for a while where you're just kind of like, I don't know, man, they got to get a stop. But, you know, you get some you get a couple picks. You're good. Make some play, make some other plays, get in the end zone. You know, the, the play to Brown, I love. Because the, the play before that looked horrible, because it looked like some like playground play. We were talking talking about this. My buddies watching the game. We're like it looked like some playground play where it's like, just get it together, guys. And then the next play is almost exactly a playground play where Alan Alan rolls out and he's just he points to Brown. He's just like, just run, just run to the yeah. back, of the, like run all the way, and I'll just get underneath it. Like that's that's all you got to do. So, you know, things like that, and you know, the the, the pass to Diggs was great. Like, that's just a super throw, uh, and you know, you know, Patriots tried. Try they didn't work out that well, but uh, but I just that, don't think they had the talent. I don't think yeah. sometimes you gotta you gotta have the Johnnies and the Joes at the end of the day, and I just sure. don't think they're quite there yet. But I no. give them a lot of credit. They they certainly uh they came to play, and then given all this stuff, and to your point, ain't nobody in the world thought the Patriots are gonna win this game. No, I kind of find it humorous. I was watching so right at noon the pregame shows, I was flipping back and forth between CBS and Fox and mm -hmm. I, I was listening or watching Fox and it was like, they weren't even now like Jimmy Johnson just said straight out like the Patriots ain't winning. They're going to win this because they were talking about playoff <laughs> possibilities. And he's like, well, the Patriots ain't going to win this game. So, you know, they also, they had a better chance of Miami and Pittsburgh both I, losing to get in than the, they uh, did to beat the bills. I but, saw the, I was watching some of the CBS pregame. I caught that, you know, right before the game started and they had like each guy in the panel make the case for, for each one of those teams to get in the playoffs and poor Nate Burleson had to make the case for new England. He's like, well, if they do this, they do this, they could, you know, they could, they could absolutely get them. I'm like, dude, they're not doing either of those things. What did, what did you think of those of, things happening? What did you think? I know you saw at least some of it anyway, Ron, mm -hmm. I'm not even just about Buffalo around the league. A lot of uh, really nice pregame tributes. Yeah. To DeMar from people wearing jer his jersey to warm up. So a lot of love mm -hmm. for DeMar t-shirts, uh, painting the the three on the football field, to yeah. just ceremonies before the game. It was uplifting. And I'll tell you, it was, I can't remember who said it. I'm, I wish I could give the proper credit. I think it might've been somebody from Fox um, TV, but mm -hmm. 
the, the statement was kind of like it was a tragedy that turned into a, a triumph for the human spirit. And that is really what it felt like because there were times this week where a couple, because I really did, Joe, I'm not going to lie, man. And I talked about this already a couple of times on the show over the last week. I got really emotional when that happened Monday and I could never oh, yeah. kind of put my finger on it. Why? I know a big part of it was just seeing the players reactions and how stunned and, and hurt they were. Mm -hmm. It was just, I don't know. I took it for some reason, just really hard seeing that. And uh, I think this whole, it just, it felt good. Forget about football or the bills, just fans all over the world kind of just rallying around this guy. Mm -hmm. And it's just like anything else. Like when something tragic happens, the silver lining is always, you see the community come together. Like as horrific as the top shooting was, seeing the community come together, even for a short time, because you know, ultimately it's going to become all about, you know, gun control politics and all mm -hmm. these other fights. And that always comes to blizzard. Same deal. You know, you're talking about all mm -hmm. these heroes and all these great stories. And then you got other aspects. I don't even want to talk about, but for this week, it was just great. There was unity, like legit true unity. Like mm -hmm. everybody was on the same side. Everybody's praying for this guy. Everybody was rooting him on. The New York Post of all places, I, I thought had the perfect headline. It was a picture of him and it said America's son. That's kind of what it felt like. Yeah. Like he was America's son. Like everybody was rooting for him. It was very uplifting to uh to see everything this week between fans and raising money and all that all week long. And then yeah. the players on Sunday. And then of course the, the Highmark Stadium. I mean, that was yeah, that was something else. That, was, that, that touchdown, that Joe, that kickoff return, that opening <laughs> kick. Man, that felt didn't it feel like I was like. I had the biggest smile in the world. I know a lot of Bills fans did. A lot of fans just did. Period. I was like, "Oh Man, yeah, this is fate, ain't it?" Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was laughing hysterically. Honestly, I was, I was like, "Oh, this is, this is." It was laughing because it's, 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 it's the perfect way. Just you know, to not, it's not putting a bow on the story, but to kind of be like, "Okay, everything's good. Everything, yeah. you know, every everything is settled. You know, you know, Demar's, you know, Demar's good." everybody's good. Everybody's happy. You know, it, you know, watching that, you know, the night before, you know, the Sabres the night before did a, had a little pregame thing and they did a, you know, you know, obviously before that people were doing moments of silence for him to be like, you know, just, you know, pray for him, get, you know, sure. help pull him through instead. This was like, no, he's good. And they had a moment of celebration. So like it, right before the anthem. So everybody's already on their feet, everybody's cheering and clapping and everything. And it's like, ah, oh, this is perfect. This is exactly like how to handle something like this. And it was a mild, if I had, there's one complaint I had, I could have about the game yesterday. It's that Nance, Nance and Romo pr must've prepared the whole week to be somber, uh, like for the whole broadcast, because the entire like first quarter of the game, they're just like doing the hush tones and talking about it. So then was, you know, it's a very big moment. And I'm like, this dude just ran a kickback. Like, you know, place is going bananas. And like, there's kind of like, you know, and Tony Romo still got the very serious voice on and trying to break it. And I was like, dude, somebody tell him to lighten, the, lighten, lighten up, man. Like it, everybody's, everything's good. Like, just be, just be excited for it. Don't, you know, don't break out the, uh, you know, the, the grave injury voice for this stuff. Just like, <laughs> we heard, you know, and the, Full marks, uh, you know, a lot of people might not want to hear it, but full marks to Joe Buck and, and Troy Aikman for how they. Oh, sure. Yeah. One day, holy sm I, What an impossible position. Lisa for everybody. Salters on the sideline. Every like the 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 panel with Susie Culver and Booger McFarlane and you know uh, uh, Ryan Clark. Every you know everybody. Uh, Scott Rapp, all the whole crew. Yeah. What an a horrible horrible spot to have to try to hold it together because all these people know these guys or that you know the, or they you know in Booger's case. He played. He knows what it's like. He's, you know, he's probably, you know, he's seen situations similar. You put yourself in that. Like, if you're a player, you put yourself in that spot. It's like, what, you know, what if, you know, what if that was me at some point? What if that's, you know, what if it's somebody that I know? You put yourself in that spot, and you're just like, oh god, like how do you, you can't process that? But like, it's uh, tough, man. It's so it's so hard. But like, you know, it, eventually Nance and, and Romo snapped out of it and they were, they called a really good game, but it was just like, it was the whole beginning. It was like, they prepared the whole week to be like, be sad, sad. you know, sad and, and, and down. It was like, no guys, no, like the, the place is party and they're, they're singing the shout song after the touchdown. It's just like, no, it's, it, it's party time. I think the best part about all of this, the whole week is that generally when you get this kind of outpouring of love, it's usually sadly and tragically it's because somebody's passed. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you're remembering them. This was a celebration, like to your point, mm-hmm. because he's pulled through and God willing, he's going to continue to, and he's going to make a full recovery. Mm-hmm. But that's the best part. Usually, you know, the $8 million being raised and, you know, visuals all over the place and stuff like that. That's yeah. usually something that happens when somebody's gone. Right. And for him to be able to see this and know what everybody is given to him. And I'm not even talking about the money. I'm just talking about the prayers and the love. Yeah. That's like the single best part. And oh, you yeah. mentioned ESPN doing a great job. And I c- couldn't agree more. I thought given the, the situation, having to react in real time is unbelievable. You know, I talked to a couple, obviously I have some relationships with some bills, media people. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you, you know, the human aspect of it, you can say what you want about well, whoever, any reporter for the Bill Sabres or any team. You can, you can love them as a reporter. Mm-hmm. You can think they stink, and that whatever. That's irrelevant. My point is this. They do develop. You just told me what you told us a half hour ago, 20 minutes ago that about your conversation with Casey. You know, yeah. talking about the Vikings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You're kind of leading into my point by saying that you've developed bonds and relationships with these players off mm-hmm. the ice. These guys develop to some extent a personal relationship with some of these guys off the field. They mm-hmm. spent a lot of time with them in the locker room, press conferences, sometimes, you know, charity events, things like that, that they cover and they get to know these guys well. Mm-hmm. And to see a guy go down like that, you know, I saw Sal Capaccio this week was on a, an interview with somebody and it was, it was really hard. You could just tell his eyes were, yeah, you know, heavy. And mm-hmm. I talked to Matt, Matt Perino a good friend of mine. I've talked to Matt and he just talked about what a hard situation it is because they, they know tomorrow and they know, you know, the other guys and how much they were hurting. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, it's, it's the thing of, uh, of being in a job like this where, uh, you know, fans have the view, have the view of, of sports, like the, of athletes as you're out here to win games for us. You're here to entertain us. The human side of that disappears. That, right. And like, listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm as guilty as that as anything. Well, if I'm, if I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fans of other sports. I, sometimes lose myself in that idea it's like it's like dude well you know you cover sports like you, you know what the you know what the deal is uh and i you know i'm a lot cooler about things than i used to be let's put it that way but when you like when you're in there it's you know it's you know if a guy's going through it if a guy's struggling you know in saber's case if a guy's struggling or going through it you're just like man just pull through it like get you know make a good play get a goal do you know get some get some big stops do whatever uh because you're 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 pulling for you're pulling for him not because like you know from the wins loss perspective but just like you know he's you know he's he's struggling with it or he's you know he's kind of down about their play like you want him to just get get over it get through it and get back to get back to being a you know playing well and being happy and and doing all that because we if there's a uniting human experience element it's that i think everybody understands what it means to struggle with with what you're doing at yeah. you know, one, one thing or another, everybody knows what it's like to go through that. Um, it's, it's just on such a different level as a pro athlete, because you're being wa- like you have people watching everything you do and, and people being very critical of what you do all the time. And, you know, you, you can shut that out as best as you can, but it still gets through one way or another, you know, whether it's, you know, your buddies, you know, sending you a tweet or a story like, Hey, this guy's ripping you up or, or, you know, these people are saying this stuff like what, you know, what do you think of that? They, things like that, where it's, you know, you, you can, you can try to shut it out, but like it's there and it's and the, the, the hard part is that, you know, it's there, but it's also in your own head thinking like, I know it's, I know what I'm not doing. Right. I know it's not going great. It's just kind of being snowed over with it. So you, it's, it's a big part of it. That, and it. That's why sports psychology is becoming such a, a much more important thing across the board in all sports. But, um, but it's and, pro- like, and it's, props to Sean McDermott, by the way, yeah. for, 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 for promoting that saying it's, you know, he's got yeah. his guys talking to psychologists and counselors mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Go ahead. Continue. Yeah, no, it's necessary. And, you know, and it's, it's, you know, Don Granado said something similar to, uh, along those lines saying, you know, having that vulnerability with, you know, with each other as, you know, as players in the room and all that to be able to, you know, to, to allow yourself to feel and to, and to, you know, to be open about yeah. those things. It's such a necessary thing because if you try to close that off, you're going to go nuts. I, I'm extremely guilty of, of, of doing that myself, but um, you know, it, it's, it, it's hard to do that, but like through that, like sort of, sort of shared experience where, you know, it's different levels, different, you know, you know, I, you know, people pay attention to stuff that I do, but I don't have millions of people, 
you know, screaming at me all the time saying like, you suck, you know, you're, do better. Like and none of that stuff. Like, it's, it's not like that, but it, it, but in our own ways, in our own, in our own areas, we have those issues. Like, you know, if, if you're working in an office and you got some guy who's just busting your ass all the time, it's kind of like, well, I got to shut that guy up. You know, what yeah. can I do? To, like, what can I do to do better to get that guy off my, get up, get that guy off my back or if it's a boss or a supervisor or whatever it is, you know, it's, it's, it's different levels, but that's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a shared sort of feeling because everybody has it in some way. It's just, you know, it's just for athletes and celebrities alike that it's on such a grander scale that it's, it's can be overwhelming and, you know, like to, to just kind of, you know, so it's a thing like this happens and it's like, we've all had people, uh, you know, have go through stuff and you're just like, man, I, I, I hate to see that happen. And it's it, like, that's the kind of thing that it, it, like, everybody can understand it. And, you know, and I, I think I wrote about it a little bit on noted hockey where I, uh, I said, sports is supposed to be the escape for people. Right. And, you did. Yeah. And real life hits you in the face like this. Yep. It's like, Oh, right. These guys are human. These are, you know, they are, you know, they're just like us. Like you see, you know, it, it would, the, the, the hardest thing to watch, cause obviously we're not, we're not seeing, um, uh, you know, we're not seeing what they're doing to DeMar on the field, but you're seeing the guys, you know, very, you know, terrified. They're crying, you know, all the stuff. And you're seeing that you're like, Oh God, this is, this is horribly real. Like this is, this is terrible. So, you know, uh, it, it's one of those things where it's just, it all hits you at once. And you're just like, Oh God, this is a real thing. Like this is, this is a wholly real thing. And football, you know, sports doesn't mean anything right now. It's just, it's life. I, uh, I am, using this as a opportunity to to teach myself to humanize athletes more than I do, which I already should be considering. I, I talk about that all the time and I have mm -hmm. some experience covering teams as well. Now that's a work in progress. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be completely <laughs> honest because like there was a point on Sunday, there was one play during the bills game where uh, new England punted and the ball bounced and it hit Taiwan Jones in his foot. Yep. He should have been 50 yards away from that play. There was never right. going to be a return. And I completely lost my shit on the TV. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm not going to lie. I'm a work in progress to realize that, Hey, it's a game and let's not, uh, you know, go over overboard right. uh, with it. But it, yeah, man, it, it, it's a process. And, and I did, I felt for a lot of these guys from the bills and the media who I know who, who had to, to see that again, you, you, you're covering a team. Your job is to be objective. You know, you can't be in the press box going, rah, rah, yeah, Casey scored. You're having a good game. He's turning it around. You're not doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean, you're covering him objectively. If the criticism is warranted, you're going to do it in a humane mm -hmm. way. You know, you're not going to go right. over the top on him. But at the end of the day, you're not a human being. If this were to be, you know, God forbid, and hopefully and never, we never see anything like this again, but if what happened tomorrow, if that was to happen, uh, I'm just, we're saying Casey Middlestad only because you brought up the fight. Right, 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 right. He's the name that stays fresh in my head. Mm. But if God forbid something like that happened, I would expect you to have a very emotional reaction because he's a, a person, a human being that you've mm. gotten to know as opposed to covering him as a hockey player. Right. You know, where you're not really putting that much emotion into how you cover him and, and cover the team. It's completely, completely different is, yeah. is what I'm getting at. So, uh, yeah, man, just a, a tough situation, and um, I, I thought a really good job by everybody yeah. all around and covering it. Quickly, before we get to the Sabres, because I we got to talk a couple minutes, which, by the way, one of the biggest reasons, I love having you on the show for so many reasons, but one of them is, like, you're the only guest that I could ever talk Sabres with. You know, Eric <laughs> went on Friday, don't know shit about the Sabres. Joe Buffalo wins on Twitter. He don't know shit about the Sabres. He, he he'll tune into the Sabres once the shit. bills are done. He, yeah. Joe's Joe's good for you know how you know Joe. He, he's got some <laughs> bills. He, he could talk bills with you. Old court. He's got lots of media hot takes and just media stuff in general. He's that's his cup of tea. Hockey's not, and he'll admit that he he doesn't like to, but he will. But anyway, we'll we'll get to the Sabres in a second. A couple of things that I am worried about with the Bills now as we get ready for the playoffs. Uh, they only got one sack on Matt Jones, and it just didn't seem like there was a lot of pressure from the front four. Like they had to blitz a lot more than I'm used to seeing a, a Bills team blitz. I that's got to be better. They got to get after the quarterback, mm -hmm. which kind of leads to this secondary. Now, I think Teron Johnson was amazing on Sunday. I think he's one of the great most game. underrated defensive backs in the entire NFL. He's mm -hmm. great. But aside from him, the Bills secondary is kind of a mess, man. Trey White, yeah. he had a nice interception. 
He doesn't look terrible, but he's not all the way back. I hate to bring up anything football related from the Bengals game, but in that one drive, in the beginning of a second drive, he was getting cooked. Uh, Jamar Chase cooked. Tyler Boyd cooked him for a tough touchdown. Matchup. Jamar Chase, tough matchup. Yes, real tough matchup. That's what I'm saying. You know, you got an elite quarterback and an elite receiver. That could have been Jalen Ramsey. That could have been almost any corner. So I'm not going to put him to the, the coals right corner, now because of that. brand new knee too. Like that's. But that's he's still run. right. He looks a little. He he doesn't look like the Trey White, the All Pro yeah. Trey White of a couple of years ago. And now he doesn't look terrible, but he, he's still getting back. Let's just mm -hmm. put it that way. He's yeah. not all the way back. Um, Dane Jackson goes without saying. You know, it is what it is with him. Kyrie mm -hmm. Elam has been injured on and off. He's had a hard time getting on the field. Didn't do himself any favors on yeah, Sunday. He got beat for a long touchdown. Uh, Jordan Poyer is awesome, but he's been grinding it out. He's not been healthy all year. It was the elbow, now it's the knee. So this guy's playing through a lot of pain. So he's not quite 100%. And, uh, you know, I hate he, to say it because, again. Marlo steps in and he was eh, he's okay. He's all right, but which, again, leads to kind of having, having no choice but to talk about the football aspect. What matters is DeMar Hamlin, the human being, survived and he's going to be okay, mm -hmm. and God willing, is going to have a nice, healthy, productive life. Mm -hmm. But for the purpose of this conversation, you got to talk football. DeMar mm -hmm. Hamlin, who took over from Micah Hyde, is no Micah Hyde, but DeMar Hamlin was a pretty good. good young ascending safety, a guy that I felt pretty good back there. Mm -hmm. He's out. He's he's obviously done for the season, if not for his career. Right. And to your point, Dean Marlowe, who wasn't even active for the last four or five weeks mm -hmm. is not only active, but now he's your starting free safety. So wasn't tested against the Patriots, but you can bet your ass. He will be against Miami. I don't care if it's Tua or Teddy Bridgewater or Dan Marino throwing the football <laughs> down Schrock. I don't care who it is. They're going, they're going to test the bills uh, deep in the middle of the secondary with Dean Marlowe. So, you know, defensively there are, you, you hit on it earlier. I, I think there's concerns with this team going forward. There's yeah. uh they're not playing. If you could take if you could take the ball over away three times like you did on Sunday, then I don't give a shit. You know, yeah. I'll take three turnovers and you can look mm -hmm. like shit the rest of the game. But they're going to have to tighten things up to go far in the playoffs defensively. Yeah, yeah it, I the, if if Skylar Thompson has to be the guy at quarterback for the Bills, I feel very good. Or for the Dolphins, I feel very good about the Bills' chances because I that dude couldn't do crap against the Jets. And Jets defense is the Jets fine. defense is good. Uh, yeah, but, but like. I, I think yeah, that like it was a home game for Miami and he can't do any, like, and I know and like, the season's on the line. Right. And you know, uh, Tyree kills a little bit banged up, you know, Waddle seems to be banged up a little yep. bit where he most pretty good though. Most looks most that most might be the most dangerous guy. Buffalo's going to have to deal with because the Buffalo run defense has been sketchy. He certainly was and a couple of weeks ago. Most looked nasty. Yeah. A couple weeks ago. So it, it I don't know. It, it's it, it feels like a game Buffalo should run all like should should absolutely kill them. But on the other side of it, you know, if, if two is somehow healthy and plays that, that, I mean, that changes things up a bit. And I'm like, not that I would trust the Miami medical team for anything. Say, but might play. I would call him healthy, but right. I mean, he won't play be in the game, but like he's not healthy. But like, yeah. but it's a it's a huge it's a, such a huge difference. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater's okay. He played I think okay that's against Buffalo, see. but. Um, but obviously it, it's on Hill, it's it's on Waddle, it's on Moster to 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 be the dangerous guys on there. It takes a quarterback to facilitate it, but there's there's sufficient reasons to worry about Buffalo on the defensive side. Offensive side, I don't, I don't really sweat it too much. I, you know, I don't Singletary fumble like whenever it's, it's yeah, whatever. Just it's steal with it. Like it, it, you know, Gabe Davis looks not great. He's lost. He's like, just not, he's, he's not mentally confident or is there's something no. going on with this guy. He hasn't taken that next step. He dropped, by the way, he dropped a 51. We talked about yeah. big plays, Brown, mm -hmm. Diggs. Gabe Davis dropped a 51 yard touchdown. Yeah. There's so. uh, also that sideline play where he just doesn't put his feet down. Like, yeah. like, like what do you like, babe, like, dude, that's your, like, that's literally your job. Like that's get your feet down instead. He's just, yeah, he's in his not. own head this year for some, there's yeah. it's gotta I, be some, maybe his ankle and his foot is just not maybe. quite healed. And that's and been no. on his mind, but yeah, I don't know. Just, it's, that's why everybody was ready to crown him after the Chiefs game playoff game last year, and I was like, I don't know. That's why I was, you guys. I, well, I know you were. You were definitely. You were not alone though. Like you were. You were definitely right. not alone on it. I was like, I don't know, man. Let's see what he does for a whole season. And it's been tough. I mean, injuries change that up, but but yeah, I, 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 it's very hard for me to buy into Miami. It's 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 extremely hard. And I know their defense is not bad. 
Right? It's not a bad defense, but I don't know. It's it's just there's nothing to like about really how they're set up right now. It's a lot of bad vibes. Just the, it's just they're not they're not they, they look like a team going into the playoffs getting ready to get murdered by forty. <laughs> like, I hope that, you're right. That's what they look like to me, like whether it's whether they're playing Buffalo or or anybody else, maybe not Jacksonville, but like if they're <laughs> anybody else that like playing Buffalo or Cincinnati, like they, they're, they're losing by 40. Well, ob- objective time with uh talk of Buffalo is over because it's the playoffs. So I'm going to be true to myself. <laughs> I hope Miami does lose by 40. I'll <laughs> tell you though, here's the, there's one thing about Miami that concerns me the most. First of all, they're, they are a divisional team. You, this is the third time that they've mm-hmm. seen each other. You're not going to fool them. Um, I think to a, it's too early. I'm just, I, yeah. I'm not going to declare this dude out. I just, I seen it already where he came back literally against Buffalo where you had no mm-hmm. business coming back into the game. Everything's on the line. It's the playoffs. If, if they're going to cut some corners to get him on the field, it, it wouldn't stun me. But anyway, regardless of who's playing they're quarterback. RG, dude, they're going to RG3 his career. They're going to they're gonna put him not. out there in a situation he doesn't, he shouldn't be in. As much and as that, the as whole thing about RG3. RG, thing makes me so mad because washington had garbage turf and they're just like yeah whatever just put him out there it blows his knee out again yeah look as as much as i hate the miami dolphins and as much as Tua reminds me of a russ wilson just i just don't (laughs) buy the sincerity i just i think when people are that nice even if they are i just don't buy it even if they really truly are and that's really who they are i just don't believe anybody's ever that nice but anyway i just um the quarterback regardless of the quarterback because you have Tyreek Hill and because you have Waddle and other speed um, mm-hmm. at the receiver Gisicki. position, you have, to, you have to respect their pass catchers, which mm-hmm. gets to my point. If there's one thing I am concerned about, Mike McDaniel, I thought, did a terrible job coaching when they came here on Saturday yeah. night a handful of weeks ago mm-hmm. because Miami was having outstanding success running the ball. You mentioned yep. Mostert. He was the best player for Miami that game. Yep. The Bills were having a hell of a time trying to stop him. Mm-hmm. And I just think back to that game. And if Miami coaches smarter this time around, especially because I think Teddy Bridgewater is going to end up being the quarterback, mm-hmm. um, they're going to try to run the football a lot between Wilson and sure. Mostert. They're going to ugly the game up. They're going to get mm-hmm. physical. They're going to run the ball. And the Bills, who have struggled stopping the run and who mm-hmm. do like to play a nickel defense almost 100% of the time, mm-hmm. they're going to have to commit to stopping the run. And, you know, you don't have to be the greatest quarterback, but when you got Tyreek Hill one-on-one with some of the guys that we mentioned that are struggling or Jalen Waddle, there's an opportunity there to make big plays. Um, I'm not scared of Miami. Yeah. Like, I, what, I would have rather played Miami. Played, like, Pittsburgh was the one team I didn't want to play in the first round. Not that I was even yeah. scared of them, but mm. they got past. They got they enough got weapons. Yeah. They got good running backs. They got guys like a TJ Watt can, can ruin a game. You know, mm-hmm. and make Mike and Fitzpatrick can make a big play. Yeah. So I was, uh, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to play hot there at the end. So, you know, sure, it's, it's yeah, a, and they played well thing than Trubisky. Right. So I'm not scared of Miami. I expect the Bills to handle them, but I also wouldn't be stunned if they commit to running the football, if it ends up being a, a better game than, uh, than I expected. I'll talk about this game. I'll, yeah. I'm sure I'll be talking yeah. about it. I think uh, all week long. If Miami's if Miami's smart, they they commit to running the ball because you got the way to handle Buffalo is to eat clock on them and keep the offense off the field. Yeah, like that. That's the it sucks to do it. It's not fun to play. Like you know, offensive linemen love it because it means they get to slap guys around all day with you know running the ball. But um, but that's how you got to beat them. Like that. It's it, it's like the it's the old Super Bowl twenty five playbook from the Giants. Just run the ball, work the clock. Keep the offense off. Keep their offense off the field because that's what's going to beat you. Let me give you one last hot take here, and then I want to move on and finish with some Sabres talk. I almost, if I'm a Bills fan, I almost want Tua to play, even though Tua was way better than, than Teddy Bridgewater. Here's mm-hmm. the thing: Tua has been hurt multiple times. That can't not be on your mind, right? If you're Tua, I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. He has not even practiced in three weeks, yeah. so he would have maybe a practice or two at the most before he has to come to Buffalo, a crazy environment. Yeah. In whether that's going to be 30 degrees or lower for sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's a bad environment to come in. And Mike McDaniel just can't help himself. If you got two out there, mm-hmm. he's going to throw the ball. Before Tua got this third concussion, it's officially a second. I don't care what anyone says. It's his right. third concussion this year. He was throwing so many bad interceptions. Interceptable balls. Yep. 
just opportunities for the defense to make plays. Now he'll hit you those timing passes, but if he don't get that first guy, if he locks it on that first guy and it's not there and he's got to go to his second and third progressions, I think Tua becomes a very mediocre quarterback who makes a lot of mistakes. Here's my point though. If you go to Teddy Bridgewater, you can't throw the football a lot with Teddy Bridgewater. You mm. have no choice but to commit to the run. Mm. And a team that can run the football, control the clock, like you said, that scares me more than Tua slinging the ball over the field. Let mm-hmm. Tua sling the ball over the field because he'll turn it over three times. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's it, plus, I mean, listen, the, the concussion thing, it's it's like the, you know, it's the it's the elephant in the room with with him. But when he came back from uh, I think it had to be the one after the build. No. Uh, what's the one after? I, I don't know which <laughs> there was one that he came back from, and, he, and he didn't look any he did not look the same and it was it was the it was the decision making now it, it, yeah it's defenses you know doing their job but also it was like he's not he's not making the the the, the like the same smart calls he wasn't doing the same thing you're just kind of like is this guy okay and well, it's and it's just stuck in the back of your mind you're like i don't know if he's right yet if the dolphins are smart they make sure he's absolutely 100 percent good to go and then you can play him. But if you, if they, if, if he's like even, if you're even like 60, 40, 60, 40, 70, 30 on him playing, playing, not playing, I wouldn't do it. I, I just be like, listen, it, it stinks. He's our guy, but like, we're not putting him at risk. We can, we can get back there again next year. Like, that, yeah, you got to look, you don't want to on the season, but you also don't want to kill your, your franchise guy. Yeah. I agree 100%. I, I hope they don't play him. Forget the football aspect. I don't want to see the guy get his potentially get his life ruined and mm-hmm. you got to look at the big picture anyway all right a couple minutes of savers I, I got a couple of things at least i wanted to hit on as, as we're taping this by the way i need to say this now at this point of the podcast we're taping this late monday afternoon um in advance the, the savers do play on monday night they're playing uh philly we're in the goat head so that means they're going to score six goals you don't even need to watch the game you already can turn us on on tuesday you know they scored six goals uh, the Sabres are just four points out of a wild card spot with a few games in hand as well. 20, 15, and two through 37 games. And they've won eight of their last nine. Again, as we tape this before the Philly game, you and Lance talked about on uh maintenance day podcast, uh, something that I didn't think I'd hear out of your mouth, but <laughs> it, it looks like I am. I have. And by the way, I, I told Joe before we started taping, I said, I have intentionally not listened to this week's uh, maintenance day. Yet, so make sure you guys do. Because I wanted to talk to you first before I went back, because I already knew I wanted to talk to you about this uh, Sabres playoff talk with with Joe Yurden and Lance Lazowski. Got to elaborate on that a yeah. little bit, because you're yeah. not the person I would expect to hear that from. <laughs> well, I the 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 whole point of the conversation was, and I kicked it off this way. I said, I you know, I, I, Lance, is it? Do we have to have? Do we have to start having conversations about this? Because you know they're four points, they're four points back of a wild card spot right now. Well, you know, pre, pre before before this game mm-hmm. uh, on Monday, uh, with four games in hand on the team ahead of them. I think it's, uh, I think I think they have like four in hand on the Rangers, or like there's a couple. Of th- they they have a ton more games to go. They've had a couple postponed, so it's mm-hmm. you know, they, they got to play catch up at the end. But uh, this is. Uh, they're in a spot right now where it's like, and you know, all we could do is compare it to past teams, you know, teams that have been close to this in similar situations, whatever. And the thing that we kept coming back to was that this team is not at all like any of those teams, you know, uh, the, the, you know, the, the team that won 10 games in a row and you're like, Oh my God, here they go. It's coming. Or the team that was tied with, uh, with Tampa going into, going into like December, like middle of December. And you're like, Oh man, like they're, you know, they're right there with the lightning here, you know, here they go. It's t- you know, it's, it's go time. Everything's turning around. And then, you know, they fall apart. Lightning in Tampa goes on fire. And then, you know, Sabres completely crap the bed and it's done. Uh, and then, you know, I think back to like the, uh, the 16, 17 team where they were two points out of a, uh, of, of a playoff spot going into coming out of their bye week. And they had games at Arizona, uh, Colorado and Arizona. And that was Colorado's the season. They put up 48 points. They were horrible. And Arizona was Arizona and they lost to both of them. And then the season was done after that. Like they had, they had nothing left to like, they were just like, Oh, we, well we blew it. <laughs> and then they, they played like they, they were in their heads and they, they, they blew it the whole rest of the season. So this team, there are only what for, at least from that 16, 17 team, there are two guys left. Kyle Pozo's Emgus Gergensen's that's it. 
Yeah. There's nobody else from that team that's around. Even the teams from like 19, you know, 2019, 20, 2018, 19, like teams that had these, these runs you know, with, you know, with Ralph or Phil or whoever, even those teams have huge turnover. Like there's still not a lot of guys left over from those teams. You know, you're talking about adding Darlene or adding Middlestad or adding, you know, Thompson or whoever. Uh, th- this is such a different group compared to any of those. And they don't have that experience. They don't care about the history, right? right? You can't come at this group and say, well, you know, it's been 11 seasons and there's been no playoffs. Like you can't come. They're like, okay, well, cool. 11 years ago, I was, you know, your own power. 11 years ago, I was nine, (laughs) you know, like JJ Paterga, 11 years ago. Oh, I was 10. Cool. Great. Like that's puts you in your place thinking about, you know, how to, how to address this team. Um, and, and, you know, like all these guys, like none of that matters to them. That like history doesn't matter to them. So that's good. It's just how they're playing now. And the, the way that they play with the offense and that's so it puts pressure. Remember how every, basically every season before this, it was always, how do you prepare for another team? Like, how do you, know, how do you, how do you, how do you, like, you know, what's your way of, uh, of uh, how to handle a team? And it's like, well, we got to play our game. And then what would end up happening? Well, you end up getting stuck playing the other team's game because the other team is the good team. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're stuck playing a style of play that you can't, that you don't want to play and one that they've mastered and they're going to beat your ass all over the ice about it. What happened against the Wild? The Wild didn't want to play the game the Sabres played. They don't want to play that up and down style of game on the ice. What happened? They tried to do it. They effed around and found out they can't do that. <laughs> like That's not, that's not how they should win games. And, he never said, even said that after the game. He's like, we didn't want it to be a track meet. And it turned out it was a really long track tonight. So, you know, it's it, it's the Sabres have been able to make teams play their game. Even when even when they try to, you know, teams have been trying to like stifle them up. You know, Pittsburgh's done it. You know, uh, Vegas tried to do it. LA tried to do it. Like all these teams try to bottle them up in the middle and, and dare them to try to carry the puck in. Well, at some point, it's going to change. And then... Sabres have been patient enough to 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 know when to not push the button and when to push it because they've been able to force some of these teams to break out of that because you can't throw the wall up on the red line if they're running past you dumping the puck into the corner and then you can't catch up to them and then you're like oh crap where'd everybody go like you're just scrambling in your own zone trying to find where everybody is but Sabres Sabres players already know where everybody else is they know where they're everybody's on the same page so much that it, it makes it very hard to deal with them, especially the, the, the Skinner tuck Thompson line. Like those guys know exactly where everybody's going to be, which is bananas <laughs> mm-hmm. because you, because you, 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 you don't, ex- I, I don't know. Maybe I don't expect it because I never saw it before here. Really? You know, Jack and Sam kind of had that sometimes, but not really. Um, but with these guys, like even some of the other, like, you know, the kit, you know, cousins, Paterka and uh, Quinn, like those guys kind of have that going. The Minnesota game, Tuck, Middlestat, and Olofsson looked fantastic. That that was easily the, the their best game of the season by far, by far, by far, by far. And then you know uh, Krebs, Gergensen, and Oposo, they're the same thing every night. You're going to get the same effort out of them. They're going to play really good hockey every game. Find me a season where you could say you had at least every night three lines you could you could say are going to be on their they're going to be on their stuff. One line might be off, and then you just say, okay, well, they'll take some of their minutes away. Whatever other line's going, they're going to get them. Yeah. And then you're good. Like, you're good with it. Like, that's, and then you got Darlene and Samuelson playing like 25 minutes a night, 25, 28 minutes a night. And then you got Power and Clegg right now playing the other tw- like 22 minutes a night. And it's like, there's, you know, there's two thirds of the game, more than two thirds of the game right there. So you don't have to sweat a lot of this stuff. It's, it's a different team and the, the goaltending has been good. UPL has been fantastic. So like it, it's, it, it, you know, and Anderson's been great too. Like it's, let's not take that away from him either. Like Anderson's been awesome too. So, you know, Comrie's coming, but we'll see. Um, but it's, it, it's, everything's going right now. I mean, you don't win eight and nine without having everything go, but like it, it, you can start having the playoff talk because I just, you know, knock on wood, unless there's a, you know, a, an injury apocalypse here, this team's going to keep playing this kind of hockey the rest of the way. And it's going to be interesting to see how it changes or, or doesn't change or how it, how it finds itself away, you know, going down the road at the rest of the way. Cause there's going to be hard games coming. There's going to be some hard trips. 
uh, you know, there's going to be adversity. There always is. But um, but this team's learned a lot of stuff already this year. And even going back to last season, they learned a lot. But like this year, they're finally learning how to put away games and they're how and how to hold down games too. So that's that to me is the biggest tell because there's been so many games this year where you know I've said it like I, I it basically three two of those games on that that trip out west the the Colorado game the Vegas game were games that's like those they they lose those games last yeah. season they absolutely lose those games last season but they didn't because they you know they held it held it down they got the goaltending and then you know you get a clutch goal here or there like that's that's what happens the, even like the, the last four games like the, the the Boston game they have any business winning that game no like they had a lead they blew it came back, tied it, and went in OT. Washington game, same thing. Had a lead, blew it, came back, tied it, got it in overtime, won it. Minnesota game, exact same thing. Like teams that teams that are just kind of flashes in the pan don't do that repeatedly, and they don't do it against great teams like that. Yeah, I'll tell you why. Win or lose, my favorite part is that they're fun to watch. If you put on that TV, you, you, you tune in the game, you're going to get an entertaining uh, two and a half hours. And speaking of, you know, you use that word bananas. Rasmus Stalin the other night, two <laughs> goals, five points. You know what I was thinking, Joe? I would have paid money to be around our our friend, uh, Jill Thompson, a.k.a. <laughs> Sabres Bunny on Twitter. I kept imagining see her, her knowing how she is with, with Rasmus and seeing him have a five-point night like that. I kept thinking back to uh, it would explode. like being in the diner at Harry <laughs> Met Sally, like that scene in the diner with Rasmus Stalin putting up five points on <laughs> the border, just going nuts and losing it. Um, This guy is so much fun, man. He's third in the NHL among defensemen in points. Again, as we take this 44 points, he's behind only Eric Carlson and uh, Josh Morrissey. And then he's uh, – Second in goals with 12, which is just one off from Carlson again as we mm-hmm. tape this. And by the way, also early on Monday afternoon before we started taping this, named the NHL's third star of the week. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I don't even want to say progression anymore because he's here. You know, he, he's here. He's one of the best defensive players in the league, one of the best skaters in the league, one of the best puck mm-hmm. handlers in the league, and one of the most fun players to watch in yeah. this entire league. It's easy to bring up the Sabres. And always talk about Tage Thompson, who's been absolutely magnificent again. Mm-hmm. But man, Rasmus Dalin, dude, yeah. he, he's a beast. This is just he, fun to watch him right now. The the wake up calls that we saw from Thompson and Dalin last season, where the light bulbs, like I mean, Thompson's a whole other story. Like that's that. Let's not get that confused. But like with Dalin, we saw those the flashes of it in the past. You know, yeah. the, his rookie season, he was put up tons of points. He looked really good for that. Uh, the Ralph years, whatever, forget them. Don't think about them ever again. No, no need, no need to ponder what happened during those years. Those are the dark ages because now, like, this is what he was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. This, this is what when they drafted him first overall. This was the guy that that was supposed to be. That was supposed to happen. Right. This is what this is what he is. This is exactly who he is. And now he's got the attitude to go with it. Like he's he's in a. I don't. He's got the. I I don't give a shit mentality he's like yeah. you don't like me fine whatever F- screw you like i'm just gonna do this like, he's 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 incredible it's it's incredible to watch him and it's makes me feel smug because i'm just kind of like no this i knew this guy was in there like i knew this guy had this capability i knew it was there You'd, you could see it when he was a kid you know in junior or not junior playing in sweden you're just looking at the game you're just like this guy's on a whole nother level when it comes to playing offense when it comes to doing this his defensive game is is really good now but like the offensive game is is top tier absolutely top tier and it's it's something else man like it's 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 a very (laughs) was it iron mike sharp pat myself on the back thing from (laughs) the old days like i that that's a gift that i bust out every now and again but (laughs) um but like that it's just kind of like no man like i've been telling you guys like it's there just give them give them the give them the opportunity to show it and you know i (laughs) you talked about him a lot on this podcast with with his when he was having slow starts early in his career too and you were talking about i bet you it's so frustrating i bet you was a lot of it to do mentally and uh yeah it's, yeah, it I mean, seems like that was obvious. You're obviously right now because you can mm-hmm. just tell the confidence and 
in the mental state he's in playing the game right now from game one this year has been mm -hmm. night and day over the last couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, obviously when, when your confidence is up, you, you play better no matter what, because you're just kind of, yeah, I can do this. Because mm -hmm. yeah, if there's any doubt in your mind, you're going to be like, mm, I don't know. And then you hesitate. Then, you know, uh, something that you would do naturally, instinctually uh, isn't there. Then you're too late to do it. Yeah. Uh, in his case, he's like that that block is no longer there. And I mean, that block is probably the voice of Ralph Kruger saying, don't you dare go past the blue line with the puck, but it's, it, it's, or, you know, get your ass back on defense. Like, like those are the blocks in his head where it's kind of like, am I doing this wrong? Have I been playing defense wrong my whole life? Right. You know, what's going wrong? You know, what's going on here? Instead, Don's just kind of like, no, man, you, you know what to do. You know what you're, mm. you know what you're capable of. And then, you know, he has, uh, you have Samuelson next to him who just takes care of business on defense. So like, it's the perfect setup like that, you know, it, 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 it could not be a more ideal setup for them right now. And, you know, Samuelson's kind of the secret, the, the, you know, the secret guy that unlocks it. But like, I mean, it's it's something else. It's 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 pretty amazing to watch that. The only thing I can I can get in my mind is like and obviously I wasn't here to cover that team. But like this must have been this must be similar to like what it was in 05, 06, where you're just kind of like, whoa, this team is fun. So yeah, a ton of goals. They play with a ton of pace. Like, this is unexpected. I mean, you were hoping this could happen with this team. I think that you know the, the, some of the signs were there last year, but but now that they're doing it, and you're like, oh, we thought this might happen next year. Now it's happening this year. You're like, oh, okay, let's go. So I that's, think it, that's why we could have we can start having that playoff discussion. I think it's a great, uh, you know, circling all the way back to your Detroit Lions. I, I think in a way it's kind of similar because they're fun to watch but you don't want, you're so guarded still. It's like, yeah, like comparing them to the Sabres from that time frame, the Sabres won a lot. You know what I mean? They were a successful team, whereas this team has to prove it. But in terms of the, the product on the ice, yeah, absolutely. Uh, very similar. One last question. I'm gonna let you go. Which, by the way, again, we're getting late in the afternoon and Joe's got to get to the arena to cover a, a, a game tonight. Circle back to Tate Thompson one last mm -hmm. time. You know, I've, I've been thinking about this a lot. So, during the offseason, he gets the big extension, the long-term deal. And I think most Sabres fans liked the deal at the time, but there was also a pretty decent contingent of people who said, you know, the guy's had one good year. He hasn't proved worthy of this type of contract. And I'm like, all right, well, if you would have told me, so Joe, if we would have had this podcast, you know, this episode, let's say we were taping this in August or September, sometime mm -hmm. before the season started, I said, Tage Thompson will follow up his breakout season of last year and getting a big deal and he's going to score 31 goals this year. I think the average Sabres fan would have said, you know what? I'll take that. It's not the best year, but it's a good year. Right. You know, uh, you, he's getting that contract. He's proven that it was no fluke last year mm -hmm. and he's worthy of this money. I think most people would have signed 80% of fans. I think would have signed up for 31 goals. Well, he's got 31 goals already this year. And we're not even, we're 30, through 37 games for the Sabres. They're literally not even at the halfway point of the season. Yeah. And he's got 31 goals. He, he's third in the NHL in goals. And uh, I think he's like fifth in points. Just by the way, side note, <laughs> Connor McDavid, dude, it's, 76 yeah. points. He's got 14 more points than the guy who's in second yeah. already. And we're not even halfway through the points. You want to talk about somebody second who's just, is his teammate. Is his teammate. <laughs> so, I mean, he's quite literally running away. With the scoring race, so you don't need to spend any time if you're a Tage Thompson guy wondering if Tage might win the scoring title. That shit ain't going to happen as long as Connor McDavid stays healthy anyway. Point being, though, you sign up for 31 goals before the season. I, do you think most Sabres fans would have said yes? Yeah, oh yeah, 100%. They, okay. they might be disappointed that it's like, ah, well, you had 38 the year before. I will take 30, though. Like I think that I think that's an easy say yes. Like You want to see more, but like you also be like, oh, I can understand if he doesn't get as many. I, I would get that, but yeah, I, I I think before the season you ask people, he's like, well, he, he scores thirty one, yes or no? Like, mm, yeah, I'll take it. I I think that I think that's an easy yes. Yeah, I do too. I I mean, if you want to get greedy and say like, no, I think you could put up forty or you could put up fifty. Like, okay, I mean, I sure, like why not? But like now he's on a pace for what sixty five. <laughs> I mean, come it's on, ridiculous, man. it's bananas. I keep saying bananas, but it's bananas. It, it really is. All right, folks, well, that's going to put a wrap on it for this episode. I want to thank Joe Yurda for joining us. And again, if you haven't done so already, make sure you go to his uh, Substack, notedhockey.substack.com. 
measly five bucks per month, man. Trust me when I tell you it's worth it. Or you can do 50 bucks for the year, 50 bucks and a penny for the year. And you could be Joe's editor for a story as long as it's like right. at least semi reasonable. Anyway, yeah, uh, please, it, please make it a hockey story too. Like that's yeah, make, make it a hockey yeah. story. And I'll tell you, man, again, it would have been nice to have a, a show next week where we could have talked about a Bills playoff game and a Detroit Lions playoff game, but it was okay. still it was a good season for Detroit. Better days are certainly ahead for them. Hopefully, better days are ahead for the Sabres as well. Mm-hmm. And there's still time to make some noise. But anyway. Thanks as always, Joe. Good to have you back on, man. Yeah, it's it was fun. It was, it was good to be back. And, you know, the best part of uh, the NFL playoffs is we don't have to talk about a Green Bay Packers playoff game. <laughs> talk to you later, guys.